Hi, my name is Soren Netza. I'm a lead product manager at AT&T in our CTO organization, and I'm responsible for um, developing and uh, launching machine-to-machine -machine products and services focused on large businesses. What, um, what drove us to this Industrial Internet Consortium is our ability to partner with the bellwethers of the industrial internet and define the use cases that matter to all of us, define the technologies, the frameworks, the gaps that exist between our current standards, uh, what's being developed today, and drive the changes that are required to support our specific needs of the industrial internet. We also look at this as a uh, potential to, uh, to grow our business by partnering with many of the found founding members as well as the the members of the Industrial Internet Consortium. That's perfect. <laughs> Thank you, sorry. Paul, can you give a, a brief introduction? Yes, Paul Didier. I'm a solution architect in Cisco's Internet of Things group. Um, I've been focused uh, eight years at Cisco uh, in industrial networking, so I have a, quite a bit of background here. Um, why is Cisco into this? Well, uh, one of the terms you might have seen across all of these terms, IOT, IIOT, uh, Industrial Internet, is the Internet. And uh, Cisco has, uh, over its 25 plus years, um, been very, very closely associated with the Internet. Cisco sees uh, this Internet of Things, Internet of Everything, Industrial Internet, however you want to call it, um, as the next uh, major innovation. We've been uh, driving the internet through computers, through voice, through video, um, all of these different waves of more and more stuff um, using standard networks. We've helped drive uh, you know, the standards, the consortiums, the use of those technologies, and, and we definitely view this as a, as a next big step for the internet. And so Cisco wants to be closely associated with uh, with helping create standards, reference architectures, test beds, um, partnering with uh, some of the other key players in this space to see uh, an even field uh, laid out, um, a field where you know security is going to take a, a first, uh, first and foremost uh, stand in that architecture, but also see the interoperability, see the uh, the play of uh, new devices come on. So Cisco has a lot to. Um, to bring to the table, and I think uh, as well, I mean, we, we've been closely associated with the internet. We hope to see uh, a lot more things being connected and a lot more communication uh, infrastructure going into place. But overall, we think uh, the, this uh, industrial internet is, is going to be a big thing for the economy, um, big things for uh, various governments and, and uh, all of these companies involved here today. So that's all. Thank you. Joe, brief introduction. <coughs> Hi. I'm Joe Salvo. I'm uh, director of the Industrial Internet Consortium effort at GE. Uh, I wanted to say uh, a few things about uh, how we look at this whole space, and I think a lot of it can be understood in the context of uh, two uh, compelling laws, Moore's Law and Metcalfe's Law. So we all know Moore's Law, uh, computing power doubling every 18 months or so, uh, and Metcalfe's Law, uh, based on uh, Bob Metcalf's uh, notion of the Ethernet increasing in value as a, as a power function. And that now has been validated in other types of networks as well as we've seen in the past decade as social media has exploded uh, in creating value based on this networking effect. GE has been focused on building networks for over 100 years. Uh, Thomas Edison built the first electrical grid in Lower Manhattan over 100 years ago. Uh, we have extended that network across uh, the face of the earth, and it has truly changed the fabric of everyday life. The skylines of the world are different because we have electric power. With no motors, you would never have an elevator to take you above the seven floor limit that most people are willing to walk. Uh, the internet is no different in that we are laying down a fabric that is going to totally reshape how we do everything. And I think we're not used to thinking exponentially, but since I've lived through this, 
you know, this phone is basically a supercomputer of 30 years ago. So when I was a graduate student, I bought a 10 megabyte hard drive for my computer. It cost me $1,000. Today, I can buy a three terabyte encrypted hard drive for about $100. That's about $100 million of value. We don't typically think that way. So imagine what this type of device is going to be able to do in 30 years. So these ideas aren't just a good idea. These ideas are not just compelling, they're unstoppable. So we have to build a network that is going to be able to handle this kind of capacity. So we are going to transcend the concept of things to brilliant objects, brilliant machines. We're going to have to make up new terms to describe what's going to happen over the next 10, 20, 30 years. And we need to get together as a group and try to figure out how to secure it, how to make it uh, open, interoperable. And I think the fact that this group here sits here in front of you today is a, is a testimony to the ability of some of the largest companies uh, you know, in the United States and on a multinational level as well to understand that this is not just another activity. This is very serious and we have to get it right and we have to have a lot of dialogue. Thanks, Joe. Ron. Uh, I'm Ron Ambrosio with IBM Research. Um, 128 gig USB stick. I, I think I bought that same 10 gig drive for my uh, TRS-80 a long time ago. 10 meg. 10 meg. I use it as a, uh, as, as a wheel chock these days <laughs> for my Jeep. Um, IBM has been working in the area of uh, cyber physical systems or Internet of Things uh, actually for quite some time. Um, if you look at our Smarter Planet uh, campaign, uh, you'll see that it really has a lot to do with uh, bridging between the business and operational domains of a lot of different industries. And they're all industries that we work with and have for many, many decades. Uh, my own area of focus is on the uh, utility industry, in particular electricity and gas, and have been leading the smart grid activities in IBM for uh, almost 15 years. And that was one of the uh, use cases and industries that helped drive our focus on the whole Internet of Things space. Um, one of the reasons that we uh, joined our partners up here to establish this new consortium is because uh, we're really at a, an inflection point. Um, you know, as Joe was saying, both uh, Metcalf's law and uh, Moore's law, things are coming together uh, from a technology point of view. And I think things are also coming together from uh, you know, an understanding uh, of the potential impact to improve many, many different industry segments through the use of uh, a much more distributed kind of uh, device infrastructure and a much more intelligent device infrastructure. Uh, you know, and what that really means is that we can start to leverage advanced, uh, not only information technology, but advanced analytics, advanced math sciences, ultimately to optimize things. Uh, you know, we want to optimize every different slice that you can take. You want to optimize efficiency of manufacturing, of electricity delivery. You want to optimize uh, you know, business performance. You want to optimize revenue. Uh, you want to optimize customer value. And in our view, that's really what this is all about. We need to build the technical underpinnings, um, but ultimately this is about what are the business and customer values that we're trying to achieve. And we think that uh, you know, joining these other four partners is really making a strong statement that you know, there's some credibility to uh, this being the time to really act. And so we're looking forward to, uh, to working with uh, the other members that have already joined and hopefully a lot of you in the room here 
uh, who will choice, choose to join. Thanks, Ron. And last but absolutely not least, Jeff. Hi, uh, Jeff Hedders. I'm with Intel Corporation, and I work in the IoT group that's been fairly newly formed. And I'm a, a strategist, a chief strategist for the standards and alliance uh, organizations and strategies with inside Intel. And the reason why Intel's interested in IIC and help form IIC is we see it as an intersection of, the, of three vectors. One is the data center, cloud-based services and business models intersecting with embedded connected devices that are newly connected to the internet, along with data analytics and big data. And we think these three vectors are coming together in a point to cause a transformation in the industry. And this transformation in the industry, what, from Intel's perspective, we'd like to see innovation accelerated and new business models come out of this innovation. And in order to get that innovation and acceleration of that innovation happening, we have to create an ecosystem of aligned reference architectures and aligned business models and create the, and when we talk about test beds, the opportunity to test out these new types of business models in an environment where we have very large stakeholders in the industry driving towards a standardized approach.